Welcome back to the Daily Dose of Veterans Intel for all of you who survived the Marine Corps birthday and Veterans Day weekend. I had a blast. Look down below so you can see some video of what I did on Veterans Day. It's a lot more than just free meals. Today I want to get serious. I want to talk to you about a couple of very important issues. Globally, we're dealing with Israel and I have a take on that. And here, right here in America, with veterans, we are dealing with, let's just call it a robust discussion on the claims process and the types of organizations who are allowed to participate and help veterans with those claims. We're gonna get into it, so let's go. First up, I'm gonna talk to you about Israel and give you my take on what's going on. But let's start with a little conversation about veterans. We just finished Veterans Day. Now, in America, we go to war. You send your soldiers and your airmen and your Navy and, of course, your Marines to war to fight on dirt that does not occupy space in your subdivision or in the jurisdiction of your homeowners association. You go somewhere else. America is very, very difficult, if not impossible, to just invade. We have, we have two coasts that are very well secured with military bases and subs and satellite. We would know if they were coming. We're also friendly with our friends to the north and the south. Although some people might have some problems with the people from the south, currently they are still our friends. So we would know days and days ahead of anybody trying to do anything to invade America. Now we've had one attack in my lifetime and it was a bad attack, but it was one attack on one day. And then to fight the war, we sent service people to other dirt to fight. That's just the reality of living in America. That's just the privilege of living under the stars and stripes. So let's not forget that. Now let's look at Israel. Israel is a small country surrounded by its enemies. We're talking about enemies who have mantras. They have writings and they have, and they have sayings of wanting not just to defeat Israel in a war, but to take away all life that exists there. They want to eradicate an entire race of people from the face of the earth. It is in their mission. And also, just so you know, they don't really like America much either. They would really like to take us out, but that's much more difficult. So they're really focusing on getting rid of Israelis, uh, particularly people of the Jewish faith. So you were surrounded by these zealots who will do anything to defeat you. They will cut, they will take tunnels and burrow into your homeland. They will, they will, they will take your children. They will take uh, the elderly. They will take women. They will take them and hold them hostage. At best, they're holding them hostage. Now, just imagine for a second, let's just pretend that America did not get along with Canada. And Canada somehow dug some tunnels and came under here and kidnapped a bunch of people, murdered a bunch more people, and just created havoc. Do you think we would listen to an international coalition telling us to cease fire? I don't think so. Canada would feel the full brunt of the American military. And nobody's going to nobody's going to talk us out of that. Nobody's going to talk any reason into us. We are just going to get retribution and to ensure that that does not happen again. I think that's what Israel's doing. They're surrounded. They've talked. They've had talks. But it's really difficult to believe people who don't want you to exist. A Vietnam vet once told me, it's really difficult to de defeat an enemy who believes death is a promotion. Think about that for a second. If you believe you've done a great job by becoming a martyr and dying for your cause, it is very, 
very difficult to defeat an enemy like that, and you cannot do it with rational humanity at the forefront of your mind. So Israel, I am with you. Do I think invading Gaza is ideal? Of course not. But do I think the situation in Israel right now promotes an environment of ideal, promotes an environment of doing what's great PR and looks the most humane? I do not. Now, I know there's plenty of you out there that disagree with me, so please feel free to jump in the comments and please try to back up things logically. I don't want to hear any uh, racial attacks. I don't want to hear any anti-Semitism. I don't want to hear loads of propaganda. I want to know what you think and feel after you've been consuming this information. Because I don't think it's as simple as a lot of people want us to believe that it is. This is a very difficult problem, but a country was attacked brutally. And whether somebody did something before, the whataboutisms, they, they don't affect my opinion here. What about what happened 50 years ago? What about uh, when they gave away? That doesn't matter. You're killing innocent civilians, period, brutally. You're taking them hostage. And then while you're keeping them hostage, you want Israel to do a ceasefire. I, 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 I just don't know. I, I know that we wouldn't do that, not in a million years. One of our mantras is we don't negotiate with terrorists. So we, why would we ask somebody else to do that? I don't know. You tell me. All right, right here at home, we are fighting another battle. It's a battle of veterans, sometimes against veterans, always for veterans, and certainly about veterans. And that's with the claims process. Now, the claims process, for those of you who are not in the VA system, is how you go about applying for disability benefits for injuries, seen and unseen, that happened to you while you were in the military. Now, there's a lot of money involved in this. It's billions of dollars. And there are companies who make money trying to make money and use that entrepreneurial spirit to jump into the game of veterans claims. Now, other people think that they shouldn't be doing that. And some of their thinking is backed up by law. There are laws against unaccredited for-profit actors operating in this space and they cannot file claims. They cannot collect fees. But the problem is the enforcement was gutted uh, years ago. So even though it's still illegal, there's not a strong enforcement mechanism. Now, if you want to read an article that covers all the various facets of this, uh, I will link down to a Military Times article that goes into this situation a little bit more in depth. If you want to pause and go read that and come back, we will wait. Okay, you're back. So now you know more than I know because my memory is crap. So you probably know more than I do. Now there are people who think all of anybody who makes money should not exist. And there are people who say that this is a free market. We should be able to do whatever we want to do. I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't think that veterans should be charged for something that is free for them. It is available at no cost. And I don't see a reason why somebody would want to pay an upfront cost for a service they can get for free. On the other hand, I live in Southern California, a place where there are more veterans than there are anywhere else in the country. We have, we are overrun with veterans who need help and we don't have enough service officers, either uh, in veteran service organizations or county uh, offices or, or wherever they come from. We just don't have enough of them. So these for-profit companies are coming in and saying, we are filling a void. We're trying to help veterans. And they make a compelling argument to a lot of people that I even know. Now, to me, there's a couple of things, because I am in the American Legion and I have these discussions with other legionnaires. 
So there's two reasons why, as a Legionnaire, I feel I have to be on the side of going away from for-profit companies. First reason is we have resolutions that we support legislation that takes that element out of the arena of claims. Number two, we are a law and order abiding organization. And technically, if they are not accredited, they shouldn't be helping people file claims and they shouldn't be taking money. It's illegal. So the law and order side of me goes, if you don't like it, work to change the law. And if you don't like it in your legionnaire, work to change the resolutions. That's what we're always told. We're always saying, you don't like something, you write a resolution. It's, you write a resolution. Now we're being told that as legionnaires, I expect the organization to follow the same rules. I don't think that's asking a lot. I don't think that's very much controversial. Now we still have the problem with too many people. And since the, the PACT Act, it's just compounded the backlog. It's made getting an appointment take months and months upon months, and then you get a month of grace period. It's a long time. So I do think we need to come up with a solution. I just don't think the solution is just a free for all, charge everybody a lot of money that wants to get served, because then you're only serving the people who can afford it. And a lot of people who are really need to get their benefits because they are too injured, either seen or unseen, to hold down a really good job that will give them a good life and they need a little um, income support. So let's not just leave that to the people who can afford it. So what do we do? We need to find funding for more uh, VSOs for the service organizations like the American Legion, DAV, VFW, AMVETS, etc., etc. And we also need to find more government funding for more county service officers because we have a strong need. And if you need more than one thing, if you're a person who is not moved by these disability claims, perhaps you should look at the number of veterans that are in the homeless population where you live. Because if we can get these people this help that they've earned, we can make a significant dent in the homeless population. I believe that wholeheartedly. So not only are we helping people who have served that have given you the right to have an opinion on this, but we're also getting rid of homelessness in your community that so many of you complain about all the time. To me, this is a no brainer. But those homeless people aren't going to be able to afford a thousand dollars to file an initial claim. And there's another, there's another uh, piece to solvency here. There's, there are lawyers and there are firms that, that do this work and they are accredited. They are accredited with the VA. So they are allowed to do this. Now they don't charge you for an initial claim. I used one of these services. So your initial, you, you don't pay, you know, do anything and they make their money on appeals. And when they make their money on appeals, what they do is they, they work your appeal and that takes time. It's the VA it takes some time. So you're, let's say it takes two years. So that 24 months, you're going to get a lump sum and then start getting regular monthly payments. So of that lump sum, they get a small percentage paid to them from the VA. You never have to write the check. You never have to give them your credit card. The VA will take care of that payment. Now, I, I do believe it comes out of your out of your lump sum, but you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to do anything. It's all legit. The VA is the middle person here, and you're not going to get overcharged. Now, that's the route that I've been on, and uh, we're working through it. I actually have an appeal in and probably going to have two appeals. One's been in since 2021, already racking up a bunch of lump sum. So if we get that, if we win that appeal, and I think we will, uh, then my person will make some money off of that. And I don't have a problem with that. That's first of all, it's results based. And second of all, it's legitimate and it's approved by the VA for one of their credited 
agents out there. See, and my other big problem is the that veterans can be put into desperate situations, very vulnerable. If you're very vulnerable, you can be taken advantage of. Now, to be taken advantage of, you're charging high fees. What if you're not transparent about those and there's going to be more fees upon fees, depending on the situation? So now you have, you have a financial transaction here. Remember that. Because some of these agents are promising people, and I know people that have said this to me, they are guaranteeing me that I will get a 100% rating. Guaranteeing. There's nothing guaranteed about the VA. So now you're telling an untruth in a, in a connection with a financial transaction. I believe that equals fraud. So not only are they being told that they're guaranteed to get 100%, they're being told that they are going to fast track this. I don't know how they're going to fast track it because they're not VA accredited, which means they cannot uh, negotiate or whatever agents do on your behalf with the VA because the VA is not going to talk to them. They can't get in and see your records like a, a credit person can do. So I don't know where they come up with a language to guarantee anything. If anybody guarantees you in this space, walk away, run away, fly away, teleport away, because they are not telling you the truth. So I basically just talk to you about the situation. I don't have a clear answer to this, but I do know I don't want my brothers and sisters going broke chasing money. And I do know that there are other ways. We need to find funding for this. And this is multi-tiered funding. You're talking about helping the suicide rate. You're talking about helping the homeless rate. And you're talking about helping the impoverished, the, the home insecurity and food insecurity that people have because they, they need that assistance uh, to manage their life on a level above where they are currently at. That's what's important to me. That's what's important to me is that we should be in this business about serving those who served. And there are plenty of us out there that will do it. I, I believe volunteers should be trained up and, and uh, accredited. Maybe that they can't handle the workload of somebody that does it full time. Maybe they do one, two, three a year. I don't know. But we can start to make a change. And that's what we need to do for our veterans today. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Daily Dose of Veterans Intel or just Vet Intel. We are going to be back on Friday with the Red Fry Daily Briefing. And then again on Tuesday with the Whoopi behind me right here for another full episode of Vet Intel. I want you to have a great week. Start planning Thanksgiving. I think we'll probably talk about that next week. But until then, peace out, special agent.